we will take up all these glands individually and we are starting with the first structure that is hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a part of nervous system but it releases hormones and these hormones are known as neurohormones. Because it is a part of nervous system and it secretes hormone which regulates other endocrine glands that we will see in a minute and that is why hypothalamus is considered as a link between nervous system and endocrine system. So it is considered as a link between nervous system and endocrine system. Hypothalamus is located on the floor of diencephalon. On the floor of diencephalon. And it is made up of masses of gray matter. Masses of gray matter which are known as hypothalamic nuclei. These masses, these masses of gray matter, they are the ones which are called hypothalamic nuclei. These hypothalamic nuclei have neurosecretory cells. Now these neurosecretory cells, they are the ones which secrete these neurohormones. So hypothalamus, which is, uh, as we said, it's a link between two systems. It's a part of nervous system, but it secretes hormones, which are in turn regulate pituitary. And that is why we are calling it a link. Floor of diencephalon is the location where it is present. There are masses of gray matter and the term which has been given to these masses is hypothalamic nucleus or hypothalamic nuclei. From the secretory cells of those nuclei, neurohormones are released. And neurohormones are written as NH many a times. So these neurohormones, they have their function as uh, they inhibit something or they stimulate something. So we classify them into releasing factors, releasing factors and the short form or abbreviation is RF for releasing factor and the other category are called inhibitory factors and the abbreviation is IF. So they can be of any of these categories. The neurohormones which are produced they are sent to anterior lobe of pituitary and posterior lobe. So some neurohormones are going to come to anterior lobe of pituitary and some would go to posterior lobe of pituitary. Now the means how they go to these two lobes of pituitary is different. Neurohormones going to anterior lobe of pituitary go through hypophyseal portal system. Hypophyseal portal system. And we have already talked of portal systems in different chapters like hepatic portal system and digestive system, nervous system. We talked about this also. So these are short systems where the blood from one structure that is one gland goes to the other gland or structure without before entering into the heart. So here the neurohormones from the hypothalamus. So this is the hypothalamus from hypothalamus. The neurohormones are brought to anterior lobe of pituitary via hypophyseal portal system and then anterior lobe of pituitary secretes trophic hormones. Trophic hormones are the ones which are secreted by one endocrine gland and stimulate the other endocrine gland. 
so their anterior lobe of pituitary secretes tropic hormones posterior lobe it also receives some of the neurohormones and they come via exons so there are neurons which are connecting and through the neurons there through their exons these hormones are conducted to the posterior lobe of pituitary one very important thing which we have to remember here that the neurohormones which we are talking about or hypothalamus when we are talking about two hormones oxytocin and antidiuretic hormones they are produced or synthesized by synthesized by hypothalamus so that means this is the gland with where this these two hormones are getting synthesized so in this category of hormones we are including these two also so synthesized in hypothalamus and stored in the exon part whenever they are secreted they come to posterior lobe and secreted from posterior lobe and secreted by posterior lobe so whenever we read a statement regarding oxytocin or antidiuretic hormone adh we have to emphasize on two words the word is synthesized or secreted if it is synthesized then these two hormones are synthesized by hypothalamus and the gland from where they are released or they get secreted from is the posterior lobe so hypothalamus produces oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone it comes remains in exon part and when it has to be secreted then from the exon it is going to come to the posterior lobe of pituitary and it would get secreted from here so synthesized by hypothalamus and secreted by posterior lobe of pituitary this is a very important thing this which we have to keep in mind whenever we are talking of these two hormones that is oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone which is also known as vasopressin now we will talk of all those neurohormones which are secreted by hypothalamus so we'll take these hormones and see what role do they play we have a list of all these neurohormones which are produced by hypothalamus and as we have written that these neurohormones can be written as releasing factors or inhibitory factors that means they can stimulate the release of something or they can inhibit the release of a particular hormone now as per the names this first one is tsh rf that means it is thyroid stimulating hormone releasing factor so it is going to stimulate the anterior lobe of pituitary to secrete more of thyroid stimulating hormone so that thyroid gland can be stimulated so its role is to stimulate pituitary anterior lobe of pituitary so that it can secrete more and more of tsh this tsh is thyroid stimulating hormone which is going to stimulate thyroid gland so that it can secrete its hormones sec or we can write it here this is thyroid and here if we are talking about then we are also call it releasing factor it is thyroid stimulating hormone and its role is to stimulate pituitary that means this is going to go to anterior lobe of pituitary and pituitary will increase the secretion of tsh and this tsh will go to thyroid gland so basically hypothalamus is going to stimulate pituitary pituitary is going to stimulate other gland and the final hormone will be released acth is adrenocorticoid trophic hormone releasing factor that means again it is going to stimulate anterior lobe of pituitary to secrete more and more acth this sth or ghrh which we commonly known as growth hormone releasing factor or somatotropic hormone releasing factor somatotropic 
Hormone-releasing factor. That means it is going to stimulate anterior lobe of pituitary to secrete more and more growth hormone. It is going to secrete and uh, sorry stimulate anterior lobe, and anterior lobe will produce growth hormone. This somatostatin it is a growth inhibitory hormone. This is growth inhibitory. That means, what is it going to do? It is again going to stimulate anterior lobe. And anterior lobe will decrease the secretion of growth hormone. So, it is going to decrease growth hormone production from anterior pituitary. So, Growth hormone releasing factor will promote formation of growth hormone and somatostatin will stimulate less production of growth hormone. That means these are the hormones, neurohormones, which can have inhibitory effect as well as releasing effect. The next ones are gonadotrophic hormone releasing factor. FSH releasing factor, these are uh, two which are under this category. FSH releasing factor, again, this is going to go stimulate anterior lobe of pituitary. Anterior lobe. Anterior lobe of pituitary will increase the production of FSH. Same is the case with LH. LH is luteinizing hormone releasing factor. It is found in females or this will be secreted in female. And interstitial cell stimulating hormone, this is secreted in male. That's why we have written or here. So, an individual can have either LH or ICSH. In females, it would be LH releasing factor. In males, it will be ICSH releasing factor. Again, what these hormones are going to do? They will stimulate anterior lobe of pituitary to secrete either LH or ICSH. Then coming to prolactin releasing factor. As the name says, releasing factor, it is going to stimulate the release of prolactin. And these are inhibitory. That means prolactin inhibitory factor. So they will inhibit the secretion of prolactin. Then these are melanophore releasing factors. Melanophore releasing factor. This is going to stimulate the middle lobe of pituitary and middle lobe of pituitary will secrete this melanophore uh, secreting hormone and this is going to be the inhibitory hormone. So these are nine different types of hormones which are produced by hypothalamus. Remember we have not written the names of oxytocin and ADH here. Oxytocin and ADH are direct hormones synthesized by hypothalamus but they are secreted from posterior lobe of pituitary. So when we come to posterior lobe we will write oxytocin and ADH there because here we are talking of the hormones which get secreted by a particular gland. We are not talking about where do they get synthesized and that is why oxytocin and ADH are not included in this list. So these are the neurohormones and depending upon their function we have classified them into releasing or inhibitory factor. So this is the hypothalamus and as you can say, see from this all the neurohormones they are stimulating the pituitary gland and then pituitary actually regulates other glands like thyroid or even anterior lobe is going to secrete the follicular cells and all. So ultimately, pituitary is going to govern all other endocrine glands. But the instructions, they come from hypothalamus. And as we said, hypothalamus is not a pure endocrine gland. It is a part of nervous system. That's why we don't consider it as a pure endocrine gland. So which gland is controlling all other glands? The answer comes as pituitary and that is why the pituitary gland is known as the master gland but it is controlled by hypothalamus which is a part of nervous system and this acts as a link between nervous system and endocrine system.